Coming up in this show, I'm going to give you my comments on the stock market. Avi has a sample for you of Future Speak, where he's going to look at the 10-year notes. And I'm going to bring you a hot minute where I bring you an update on that analysis. And this is the final weekend to get our MCM, the Market Condition Monitor, for free. That's our amazing new app. Tell you about that later. And then I'm going to bring you my stock market analysis. An intermediate view of the S&P 500. We'll look at the stock 50 and more. And I'm going to show you how to use the Market Condition Monitor, which I think you're going to find extremely interesting. Well, I'm going to the city and I'm going to do a city show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some dough. I've been cruising up and down for trade each and every night. And with my iPhone exciting, I know we're going to get it just right. I'll get inside your mind, we'll have a real good time. We're going to trade today, we got to trade today. Go ahead and sleep. Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and to look forward to what might happen in coming weeks and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market got battered last week. Well, that could be my whole opening and just tell you there's more to come. It's more interesting to tell you what happened as investors panicked as a hawkish Fed chair, that was Powell's testimony that came before Congress, uh, preceded a bank rout, uh, which came after Silvergate Bank said that they were liquidating. That stock, by the way, went from 239 over a year ago to three bucks today. And as contagion spread, uh, the other rest of the financial sector took a dive. XLF, the financial index, was down 4% on Thursday. The, X, the uh, KBE, which is the Spider Bank ETF, was down over 7%. That was the worst since 2020. It was a horrible day. And add to that, Silicon Valley Bank came out and said they needed to raise to, uh, uh, about two billion in cash or more, and that stock was down about sixty percent alone on Friday, coming from much higher levels. A warning came on Monday, actually, as the ECB head, uh, another one of my favorites out there, Christine Lagarde, you've heard me comment about her before in the past, uh, she warned that interest rates were going up. I guess we should have known that she and Paul had been speaking. Uh, then on Tuesday, as a transcript of Powell's testimony before Congress hit the tape, the S&P 500 moved down $40 fast. Remember, Powell and the Fed, they're correcting the mistakes that they made in the past. So uh, needing to keep interest rates high and having this hawkish uh, tone is because of two decades of their feckless management and micromanagement of the economy. So we saw uh, as that uh, a really negative day came, the S&P down 63 points. The, uh, what Powell said was that higher rates uh, were going to be here for longer and maybe be faster. And he's in, uh, based on those comments, he said that the odds of a 50% hike in March uh, were higher, and, and the market actually surged on that. And i got to tell you right now, I doubt that. I don't think that they're going to raise 50 basis points again. I think we're in quarter point increases here because they give forward guidance. And if they go to 50, they're going to kill their forward guidance, and they already have just absolutely killed their own credibility. So I cannot see uh, them going up 50 basis points. I just don't think it makes any sense at all. Wednesday was day two of Fed Powell's testimony. Money. The market uh, moved up and down like crazy, uh, and he said basically there's no decision yet made on uh, rate hikes, and uh, I just think that's nonsense. They're going up a quarter point, and I think that'll be it. Thursday was a really ugly day. It started out on the upside as investors had hoped that unemployment numbers would be worse, and that would, of course, would be better for stocks. Uh, looking forward to Friday, 
Uh, but that quickly faded uh, after the market moved into negative territory. The uh, sellers came out like crazy. The stock market went into a waterfall decline as a deluge of selling hit those banks and crypto. Bitcoin collapsed eighteen hundred dollars uh, and continued to move down under twenty thousand here on Friday. The um, S and P five hundred on Thursday was down seventy three points. The Dow down five forty three. The Russell down worse. It was down uh, three percent on the day, and the four largest banks lost forty seven billion in market value. Bond yields. Uh, went up and then uh, the safety bid came, I'm sorry, bonds went up and the safety, as the safety bid came in and yields fell uh, very sharply as money moved into bonds from the stock market. Friday, while well, there was follow through on the downside, as worldwide stocks got slammed uh, based on all of this bank selling. And as a matter of fact, the top banks in the Eurozone lost $40 billion of their value here on Friday. Uh, and uh, then uh, news uh, of that uh, Silver, uh, uh, silver uh, Valley Bank, um, what it looked like it was down about 65% uh, was just too much for the market to take. By the way, that bank has come from $753 down into the 30s during this period. It just shows you that uh, uh, this is a result of, of the Fed's actions uh, to overstimulate and micromanage the markets. All of that malinvestment and all the money going uh, into cryptocurrencies and places that were very risky and forced these banks with big liquidity to put a lot of money into uh, investments that were doomed to kill them. Well, that's what's going on right now. And that's why everybody's worried about uh, these other banks. Uh, and we have uh, just this uh, very scary situation going on at the moment. So Silver Valley Bank uh, getting absolutely slammed. And that is worrying the markets right now. And, and they just can't hold rallies. They're trying to tick up. We saw uh, here on Friday, the market uh, was down uh, oh, 40, about, about 40 points, rallied back to up 20, back to down 40, uh, back up to about up, up 15. And here, while I'm doing this recording, it's down 25 on the S&P 500. So it's just absolutely wide swings. And this is the period of higher volatility that we talked about also. Gold market, um, that is uh, was moving down and then reversed back to the upside as the dollar did the opposite. And the bond market just absolutely exploded. Uh, the 30 years at one point today were up almost four points. And the market is taking in, uh, is taking all of those potential uh, extra increase in the Fed funds. Uh, in other words, that potential cut, uh, raise to 50 basis points. Well, they're taking that out of the market today as uh, this uh, panicky situation is moving money into bonds. And that is giving a sense that the Fed may be less uh, anxious to uh, be aggressive on their interest rates. Uh, of course, the stock market is in very, very bad shape now. And we are in this period of risk. We had forecast this for the last several months. We said that the S&P 500 will lose between 300 and 600 points. It lost over 300 points already. And it's clear uh, with this big selling that we're seeing, we are deep in it now, that period of risk. And with the magnitude of this drop, with this window going out to April for a decline or even longer, and I'll show you that in a little bit later in the show, the capitulation stage uh, of this drop make it extremely ugly. If you didn't liquidate risk, uh, and based on our previous warnings, upside attempts in here may still give you opportunities to do some selling in the market to just take some of that risk down. For investors who have been listening and uh, have, or have just seen the problems in the market and waiting for this to be able to actually re-enter into the market and buy, um, those you know best prices may be one to two months away. So uh, that's coming and we'll be looking for that and indicating when we think that bottom is starting to give signs. And right now, of course, the greatest signs are that the market will be moving significantly to the downside still.
For the week, uh, there was a big rebound on Friday off the lows, but then it st uh, started to fall again. Uh, S&P 500 NASDAQ down like 3 to 4 percent. Russell down more than 6 percent, um, just as uh, this is uh, the selling just continues this week. Bond market, the 30s, they're up about four points on the week. The 10-year yields lost about 23 basis points. That is huge as that safety bid came in. Gold market uh, fell hard and then came back. Uh, there's a bottoming coming in there pretty soon. And uh, we think that's going to relate to a significant dollar decline out there, which I'll talk more about in coming weeks and months. And the silver market lost 80 cents. And this is a result of the uh, industrial sector being of the commodity markets being more at risk. Uh, and so it fell pretty sharply. We still think there's risk. Our downside target has been uh, around 19 and a quarter now on the silver market. Uh, got did get under 20. And if you want all of our information on all of these commodities, watch Future Speak on Wednesdays. We bring you 24 different futures contracts, uh, a weekly and daily analysis, and RV does a masterful job at presenting that. Dollar uh, index around unchanged on the week, went big up, came back down. As yields started to move down, that weakens the dollar, and we do think that's a short-term top in the dollar. Oil down 350, and it is still in a range that we're looking at in the oil market. We do not expect uh, that that is going to be have any kind of really uh, significant uh, movement in oil market for a while, though we do think that the bias eventually will be to the upside. Make sure you go to AskSlim.com, get acquainted, uh, use uh, our special on level one uh, and give you information from us every single day. Fantastic for short term traders on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell and like our video. Give it a thumbs up on Twitter. Follow us at AskSlim and any information that you need about everything that we do. Write to Matt at AskSlim.com. This is a preview of Future Speak. Uh, RV is going to look at the 10 year note market. Uh, this is a sample of our member content, which is available actually for levels two, three, and four. That is said, uh, uh, that's wrong there. Uh, so if you want, want to become a level two member, you'll be able to see our live, our Future Speak show, which is recorded uh, every single uh, Wednesday. Fantastic job that RV does on that. Look at what he has to tell you on the 10 year notes. If you go ahead and shift over to the ZNs, we will pull up the weekly chart. And this is why, because we have a low that's due in notes. Uh, on the weekly, there's a, a low that's due 227.243. We are looking at that 78.6 at 110, 115, and watching for this to get a pop back to the upside. If you pull up the daily okay so this is what's happening here you can see we we have really stopped going down and now we're seeing basically equal lows as this is now trying to actually base out here in the near term let me zoom in a little bit further and you can see we are looking at a key 78.6 right here at around 110 140 or so looking for that to hold and then to see this what is still a bearish ribbon turn neutral uh, to give us a sign of a trend change that is likely happening uh, here in the notes. But currently, it is still negative. So we just have, we do have to note that. If it can go neutral, that 112.230 to uh, 114.55 area looks like our zone on the upside that we would look for as we get into this next short-term rising phase. There's a low that's due 3.3 to 3.16. This is a hot minute update on that analysis that RV just brought you on the 10 year notes. Uh, I'm going to show you what's happened just in the last couple of days and how RV's comments about an upturn in those notes proved to be very correct. This is the 10 year now, just two days later. And you can see in here that big upward turn. Of course, that's related to the bank fears on Silvergate and Silicon Valley banks collapsing.
Silicon Valley Bank moving down from over 700 over a year ago down to $36 this morning as it loses about 60 something percent of its value. Look what's going on here as you see these last couple days and this upward turn right over here on this short term cycle pattern that I'm showing you and uh, that upward target that Arvia talked about. It's gotten into that level already. You can see right in here that the slim ribbon is upward turning here. It's about to neutralize the slim ribbon PO still red. That's probably about to happen. And that signals further upside movement here in the ZNs, the 10 year notes, as we're projecting up here to about uh, 113.15 up to about 114.06. How that translates over to interest rates, we're going to look at the TNX. And you will see in here our analysis that shows, and we talked about this a couple of weeks. A week ago, this abandoned baby that formed and was likely a top in there. You could see that island top there and yields now coming down. What are our yield projections in here for these next couple of weeks as the 10 years rally? Well, that's right over here, 3.61 down to 3.49. As you see these uh, uh, projections right here, as we expect that this issues uh, that we see uh, regarding the banks and how that relates to other banks and how that relates relates to cryptocurrencies and all that, we think that that is going to continue and this yield market is going to continue to go down and those 10-year notes, the forward slash ZNs and the rest of the complex there in the bond market is likely to continue to the upside. That is the hot minute uh, and uh, that's just uh, the look at how that uh, Wednesday Future Speak show uh, really brings you incredible value. Stock market analysis, projections on the S&P 500, and more coming. First, this important information. Please read this slide. It tells you about our analytical information, how we approach the markets, and how we hope that you will take our information and use that uh, for your best opportunity. Stock market analysis. We're going to show you this, but first... Just this one little picture of this slide here I want you to see. This ends in two days, on Sunday, March 12th. Uh, you're going to be able to get our new market condition monitor, which I'm going to show you in the analysis coming up, uh, and get that for free by becoming a Level 4 member. This is an amazing app to help you guide, guide you to catch the big impulses in stocks, indexes, ETFs, and it's no matter your trading style because you can just set your trading style in there. And very important, you will avoid being on the wrong side, and this reduces your risk of big losses. I'm going to demo this for you in today's market analysis is coming up. Remember, this is included with Level 4. Anybody who's a Level 4 member by this Sunday, uh, on uh, whether you've been a previous member or subscribed this weekend, you will be able to uh, be grandfathered in to get our market condition monitor for free. After that, it will be a standalone separate product that you'll be able to get. All right, let's look at the stock market. SPY, the S&P 500, the Russell, and FEZ, the stock's 50. Plus, we're going to look in at our new app, the Market Condition Monitor, to get some information about these market conditions and when exactly the timing was that they gave us uh, important turns in the market or uh, when they had been telling us about conditions that were likely to be trending. So uh, really important information here. Let's look at the SPY first. Remember that our analysis has talked about this period of risk, the period of risk being late in this cycle over here where there was a nesting going on between the minor cycle and the dominant cycle there, the blue one. Now remember, cycle analysis looks at the rhythms of the market uh, and essentially is a visual depiction of money flows. So we were expecting that this yellow area, the period of risk, was going to bring a decline. And we talked about that the last few weeks of it, just as over here, could bring very sharp declines. That period of risk was late January through sometime in early April. It may extend further out here into May. May, and I'll show you that in a while because that green dash is the FEZ and the RUT, which could continue to the downside out into 
the May time frame. Here you could see a reversal scout as it turned down over here uh, and looked negative. And we downgraded this today because of the magnitude of decline and essentially um, looking at lower levels in here. Well, this black indicator, uh, indication of the projection uh, was coming down to the 38%. We've now reduced that here to the 50%. 383. Remember that we said that the SPY was likely to fall between 30 and 60 points during this time frame while well, it's now moved down over 30 points. So it's in that target zone and still has a lot of downside risk. So this 391 uh, that we talked about, well, that's absolutely been hit. And now over here, the 383 is likely, and these are potential, uh, 374.50 and down over here, the 383. And you have to uh, put back in the conversation conversation, the potential of getting back down to that low at 348.11. Now, I think that this is an extremely low probability getting down there, but we're in a panicky situation right now, and uh, it can fall very hard when you're in this, these type of situations. So uh, if you look at this one, the last three weeks uh, fell essentially from uh, 406 all the way down over here to uh, 350. So that was, you know, 66 points. Uh, I'm sorry, 56 points down in just uh, a few weeks time. So there's a lot of room for decline in here still. So this is the period of risk. This is what we were expecting. And uh, the indications are that there will be further declines. What I want to do is go over now to the MCM, the market condition indicator. This is our new indicator, uh, which uh, will be available to, um, uh, to be able to subscribe uh, to as a standalone uh, product that we have. Though, uh, uh, for the next uh, couple of days through this weekend, anybody who becomes a level four member will be grandfathered in and get this for absolutely for free. What we're looking at here is the time frames view right over here and the daily. And what I want you to see is that the conditions for these uh, of, uh, four different stock indexes, we're looking at SPY, QQQ, IWM, and DAI, have all been pointing to the downside for a, quite a while in the daily time frame over here. So these uh, we're looking at the reversal scout and the slim ribbon. These are the change logs over here as things do change. Uh, looking at uh, all of the different uh, symbols that we have in here. So the, the, the uh, S&P 500 went negative on 221, as you can see, and on the Slim Ribbon on 228. Of course, this is March 10th, so it's been in negative condition since then. The QQQ is uh, neutral here and negative here. This is uh, since... Uh, 221. The IWM since 214, so it's been close to a month that it's uh, been negative on the reversal scout and only turned negative on the slim ribbon a few days ago. And the diamonds, you can see since uh, 221, 223, these have been negative. The real key is when you have these things as negative, what does this shorter term tell you? And here, if I look at the two hour charts, which we zoom in a lot on to get some indications, I'm switching it to the two hours and you can see that uh, back uh, three three seven, which is last Tuesday, three eight is Wednesday, where these went negative. So there was an alignment of uh, of negative occurrences here. These are all showing you uh, earlier and uh, mid midweek this week is when these turned negative, and did set up the alignment between uh, the daily and the intraday. Of course, when you go down into fifteen minutes over here, that's going to show you uh, also extreme negativity when you look at that, uh, and uh, we show you all this all the time on the SIR daily uh, that runs live. So you can get on the 15 minute. I want to go uh, into the trader view right over here so that you can see, and I'm looking now at short term, it looks at weekly, daily, and two hour. And you can see in here that this SPY is bearish. The IWM is bearish. The DAI is bearish. That's all been in alignment there. And slightly bearish is you've got the 
daily still neutral over here and the weekly positive in the QQQ uh, on the reversal scout. So this has been only slightly bearish and it has been somewhat overperforming. So you get a good idea looking at that, uh, looking at the short term. If you were a scalper, you could be looking at the inner days right in there, which at the moment is neutral here at midday on Friday. And the near term, if you're a short term swing trader, you can see very, very bearish. So on the short term, it's neutralized. But in this case, the likelihood of further declines, you can see, are very significant. Going back here to the time frames view, and you can see right over there that uh, it is showing you uh, very uh, negative conditions in there. By the way, you can uh, also look at individual stocks. I'm just going to go here and look at uh, Apple AAPL uh, and pull that up. And there's Apple right over there, uh, as you can see. And then uh, you can see all the conditions in there. Apple right now, uh, looking at all of the conditions, you can see monthly, weekly, daily, two hour, 15 minute is kind of turning over right over here and mixed uh, as uh, things were positive and now it's rolling over to uh, less positive conditions in there. So again, this is the uh, market conditions monitor giving you very negative uh, alignments here between the two hour here and the daily right over here, telling you that there is a strong likelihood that they are going to continue to move to the downside. Uh, looking at that really uh, important indicator, and I, I hope you do uh, become an Slim member or subscribe when this uh, becomes a standalone product that you can get uh, right now. And I'll tell you at the end of this how you can get uh, that for free uh, coming up uh, uh, in just a few minutes. Again, this is the SPY. And you can see in here, we're in this period where it is very likely to keep moving down very significantly. Now, I want to, because I have this FEZ and RUT on here, I want to move over to the RUT analysis so that you can see that right here. And RUT is now moving down through these support areas and comes out way over here into the May time frame before that bottom is due. This is going to make us look at the potential instead of this downside move uh, ending out into the uh, where we looked at from mid March to to early April. This really makes us look hard at the possibility of this decline ending more in the May time frame. So this is important to look at, and you can see the cyclical patterns in there uh, as they align. So somewhere in here between late April and late May is where these declines are likely to turn back upward again. And this now, because it's gotten down here to the 61.8%, will be downgraded uh, again for our members and looking at the potential then for getting to the 1640 area uh, down there. So uh, this is really bad. Look what happened here is it got to the sell zone here and just really moved down sharply. The reversal scout moving down again. And remember our market condition monitor showed this in a negative uh, condition. Let's look at the FEZ, which has been just a tower of strength here uh, as these top 50 stocks in Europe uh, have been just uh, so absolutely powerful in this upside move. Now, you're getting right in here uh, a, uh, a an engulfing pattern. Now, this is really a setup for uh, some significant uh, pullback. Now, it is pretty likely that this pullback will come out into May, maybe down to around 39. That would be losing about 10% from here. There are some minor supports in there, but I actually think 39 is a reasonable target. And again, I want you to see this window right in here for the decline uh, to bottom. In other words, the troughs to form in here is out into this period between late April and and uh, potentially early June. This is going to make us look at the potential for this decline in the stock market to go further out. And I think that is an important thing for you to be thinking about as an investor, that uh, especially if you're watching from Europe, that this has got problems. Take a look at the cyclicality in here as I go way, way back in here to the <clears throat> to the pandemic low right over here way in uh, March of 2020. And you can see the dominant cycle pattern here. And this vertical is where the actual low occurred. Here's where the actual low occurred. Amazing how beautiful the cyclicality is in here. And if you look at the minor thirds that are in there, you can see one, two, and three, and one, and 
two looking to bottom in here somewhere and then maybe a little pop and this real risk the period of risk comes out over here in april and may so this is a worrisome period for the european big stocks and that has to be telling us that there's a potential for this decline in the stock market to go way out into that uh, May time frame out there. So uh, you got to be alerted to that, that while we were looking for a low to come uh, in our stock market in sometime mid, late March, or even out into April, the Russell, the FEZ, they're telling us that that could go longer and this whole thing could end up going deeper. There is a lot of selling in the market right now and the panicky selling is just starting and it just doesn't come and go in a, in a couple of days. It takes longer than that and usually ends up with some kind of capitulation. And that's kind of what I think is coming here for the stock market. All right, you saw that market condition monitor. That market condition monitor is available uh, at no cost if you become a level four member only through this weekend, through this Sunday uh, on March 12th. Become a level four member and the MCM is included. It will be grandfathered in at no additional cost our unbelievable market condition monitor. It's so informative. It gives you such a great sense of the conditions of the market. You can compare different stocks and different groups. And uh, just, uh, I can't say enough about it. You need more information, uh, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. You need uh, 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 the special link uh, to get that discount for level four that we're offering. Uh, do go to, uh, uh, do write to Matt, and he will tell you about this level four special that we have uh, where you can get all of this information in here. Click the learn more button uh, up at the top of the main page at AskSlim.com and you will find this information and you will be able to get uh, our level four membership for three months. This is a one-time use only and it is best to use with Thinkorswim because that's how you get our live charts on there. Uh, and uh, this is just, I think, incredible. So level four uh, at this rate, only available with the market condition monitor for free for the next couple of days. So uh, if you need any more information, write to Matt. Uh, that's it. Uh, I want to make sure that you go to AskSlim.com, get acquainted, become a level one member, get lots of information on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, do like this video, give it a thumbs up and watch the member videos uh, in the playlist. Follow us on Twitter at AskSlim and anything you need to know about uh, what we are uh, have uh, as far as our amazing content, uh, write to Matt at AskSlim.com. That's it. I want you to be so amazingly careful. It is so crazy out there, and I'm always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the center, and I'm going to do a steady show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some go. I've been cruising up and down for trades each and every... Don't forget, this market monitor is available to you. Got to uh, do your best to get that and be sure you do uh, take advantage of this special.